you know, I remember spending all the last 12 months or so being really pessimistic about politics. And you know what's kind of exciting for the first time in a while? I'm really optimistic. And the reason why I'm optimistic is not because all the shit I'm worried about is gone. It's that the people who are actually a threat, which are politicians, really, more so, well, bankers and the tech giants and all that, they're still a huge threat. But the politicians who can really put the knives to the th all our throats and fuck over all of our rights, you know, the thing I care about, the shit that I cared about when I was a liberal and the shit I care about now as a conservative is the same thing. What I'm trying to conserve is my fucking liberal values, which are gone in the face of socialism and progressivism and complete degeneracy. Uh, there's a difference between it's legal to be gay, it's different than having the legal right to marriage when you're gay, than there is shoving propaganda on kids, manipulating children into becoming transgender, shit like that. So I look at the Democrat politicians, which there are plenty of Democrats who are not pro-propagandizing to children. They're not pro uh, cutting the balls off of six-year-old kids. They're not they're not pro all this ludicrous SJW shit, right? They're not communists. You know, there's so many of these Democrats and they're leaving the left in droves. And what are the Democrat politicians doing? Why am I optimistic based on these politicians? Well, I found out what the house of cards of the Democrat party, the DNC really is, is that the voters, the Democrat voters are not just stupid. Most of them are like single issue voters. There are feminists who scream bloody murder about uh, abortion. There's transgender this, there's gay that, there's the save my immigrants this, my refugees that. These are all single issue, single issue. And believe it or not, there's not always that much overlap with these, you know, outside of actually the niche of the niche, not just the progressives, uh, progressives as actually a niche of American culture. They're not the majority, but that... The niche of the niche, the limited minority of the progressives are the people who care about all this shit at once. So you get Democrats who are basically trying to capture all of these single issue voters by being for absolutely every extremely extreme progressive position all at once. And what they're doing is shocking and horrifying pretty much everybody who's not an extremist. So... You got Democrats, like Democrat politicians, flipping to Republican or independent in droves already. There was like nine of them in Mississippi flipped uh, just recently. And one guy flipped uh, during the impeachment thing in the Senate, which is an even bigger deal. Now, when you get a party who wants to not only open the floodgates of illegal immigration, but then naturalize every illegal immigrant and then give them welfare and then give them socialized health care and then give them government-funded abortions, government-funded transgender reassignment surgery, give them basically everything. And then when you find out, look, the fact of the matter is just Bernie Sanders' health care plan is impossible. When you add on top of Literally, you could run Bernie's health care plan on every single dollar that every single billionaire in the country has for five months. Not five years. Five months. If you stole literally every dollar from every billionaire in the country, that's how affordable his fucking health care plan is. And then you add on free college, uh, uh, tuition debt forgiveness, uh, fucking... All, everything else he wants and all the, the, the shit that Bernie has basically gone back on shit he said as recently as 2016 regarding immigration. You add in all of that and you realize that this lunatic, this absolutely batshit insane lunatic who can't even do the most rudimentary economics possible. You know, I'm no economist, folks, but I've listened to some people who know a lot more about it than I do. And everything he wants is not even remotely possible. It's not impossible if he turned every last one of us into fucking slaves and pressed us into fucking chain gangs. He couldn't do it. It's impossible. Not expensive. Not you would redu reduce the economy to ashes. It literally can't be done if every dollar in existence was available to him. Okay, this guy's the front runner. You think this guy can be Trump. 
Not a fucking chance. Not a fucking chance. So, of course, I'm optimistic because this is what's waking people up. When you have the, the politicians as stupid, as ignorant, and as incompetent, if not far more so than the voters they depend on, You'd think, with all these think tanks and multi tens and hundreds of millions of dollars at the, at the disposal of some of these people, that they could prepare just for a 90-minute debate. That Bloomberg didn't expect what fucking Elizabeth Warren threw at him in, like, the seventh Democratic debate, and stuttered and sweat on camera and went wide-eyed as a fucking deer in the headlights. How did nobody prepare him for that? Look, if you got that many skeletons in the closet and the Democrat Party is full-blown feminism fucking let's go, how are you not prepared? How has nobody looked at you and said, look, if you have these skeletons in the closet, you need to have sound bites ready to at least, you know, a blade of armor. Let that slide off you a little bit if you're going to take a, a fucking direct hit. He had nothing. Who in the fucking hell of this king-making fucking manipulative fucking DNC thought, you know who we should really try to put our weight behind and then keep our weight behind after all this time? Joe Biden? And the reason why is because Joe Biden is apparently the only guy they have that has both name recognition and anything even remotely close to moderate policy? You couldn't get that out of Elizabeth Warren, who is a fucking goddamn political chameleon who's been everything but a from between a Christian conservative Republican to a radical feminist fucking progressive, you're telling me that you can't organize this chick who has, you know, the only viable female candidate outside of Clinton who's who's not viable but at least had some momentum behind her. If all you got it with is Warren, you can't tell Warren, look, we've looked at the polls, we've looked at what you can, you know, what you're willing to do, and since Elizabeth Warren has no principles and no fucking soul, surely somebody could have just whispered in her ear and said, uh, hey, bitch, don't steal Bernie's platform, steal Biden's platform, and we got a chance. No, she ran as far to the left as she possibly could and left herself virtually no room to pivot back to the center in the general, which is the Democrat strategy every single time. Pander to extremists in the primaries, and then once you have a candidate, rush that candidate about 50, 100 miles to the right so that they could actually get not just middle America, but about 75 to 80 percent of America to actually vote for that person who you push through the primaries on a ludicrous, lunatic, extremist minority platform. And the Democrats have been doing this shit since Carter. It doesn't work anymore. Barack Obama had a great shtick. A lot of all these people who think that oh, Donald Trump's shtick of his of his boorishness and his, I'm an outsider and fuck you, I'm willing to say swear words on camera and I fucking mock people and I tell tell reporters, you are fake news, get out of the White House. You know, like, everybody likes this fucking gimmick of his. You know, that's not why people are going to be voting for him again. They're going to be voting for him when, at the end of the day, when it came to what actually affected the economy, what actually affected jobs, what actually affected foreign policy, what affected trade deals. In a positive way, Trump's actual policy, and that now it's just an extra little smile to our faces, an actual reassurance that they, we got the right guy, that he tells slugs like you to fuck off. But when you look at the gimmick of the Democrats, you know what their gimmick is, is I am a fucking slavering lunatic extremist. I'm the next Che Guevara. I'm the next Joseph Stalin. And then rush back to a center-right position you can't keep repeating that because everybody knows you're fake. And Barack Obama, I'm sorry, is the guy I meant to speak on his gimmick, his hope and change thing actually was almost exactly the same gimmick as uh, Trump, which is you had eight years of a the the other party guy before me, in this case, George W. Bush, who was a fucking asshole who ruined everything. I will do the opposite and not only will I do that, but I'll do it 
with great charisma. And say what you will about Barack Obama, and believe me, there is a lot of negative things to say about the man. Very charismatic, extremely so. Now, when you look back at his record and realize that he was like Bush almost exactly, only worse, expanded executive powers, expanded government powers at will, basically declared seven illegal wars, kept Guantanamo Bay open, killed American citizens, uh, fucked up foreign trade just about everywhere, had fucking China laughing in his goddamn face, sucked at virtually everything he did, um, and when it came to the, the, the crybaby shit about... Um, uh, all these uh, wedge issues that Democrats care about now, uh, Obama didn't switch to pro-gay marriage until like the middle of his second term, uh, never backed off of his pro-Christian stuff. Uh, Barack Obama uh, fucking deported more people than Bush did by a lot. In fact, I think at this point in the, in the, the comparative presidencies, Barack Obama had deported a lot more people than Trump who's supposed to be the great racist fuck you immigrant guy. Uh, Barack Obama was basically somebody that neither, that no Democrat and no Republican should venerate at all, and yet he's still held as Jesus by the left because the left is ignorant single-issue voters. And for a lot of people, black skin, Toxwell, is all they ever gave a shit about in the first place or at the end of the place. That's what we're dealing with. And you can get by on an ignorant voter base and rampant voter fraud and mass importating, uh, imp importing new people onto your fucking low info, low education plantation of voters. You can ca cater to the people that you're all uh, simultaneously seeking to replace all American citizens with, which is immigrants. And I'm not just talking about that as like replace, they will not replace us as a white thing. If you're a legally immigrated Mexican, they're replacing you. You're a black guy. They're definitely replacing you. They're replacing you fucking hardcore. You're you're the person that the Democrats can't wipe wash their hands uh, the responsibility of fast enough. They don't give a fuck about you. And they're just about done pretending to give a fuck about you. Now they're about to openly not give a shit about you. Fuck you, black. Blacks last year, brown. Brown is in. They don't give a shit about you. Asian don't give a shit about you. They can barely fucking uh, maintain any positive relationship with the Jews outside of, well, the ones that are all the CEOs and the bankers and the media moguls. They can't maintain a positive relationship with fucking Israel, I'll tell you that. So that's a fucking double-edged sword for the Jewish caucus. And this goes on and on and on. The Democrats can't win because they have no platform. And it's it's not even like... Oh, Democrats aren't for anything. Yeah, they are. They're for a bunch of ludicrous, batshit things. But why are they for those things? Because they're catering to ludicrous, batshit, fractured, splinter groups and not any kind of a cohesive culture or party platform. They're just saying, what the hell are people going to shriek on Twitter for or against us about? And we'll balance that out without realizing that the Twitter shriekers have not really been able to cohesively support anything. Uh, the, re the reason why Get Woke Go Broke isn't because there's not enough woke people to make money off of. Yeah, there is. There's plenty of enough of woke people that if you could get them all to buy your shit, you'd be rich as fuck. The thing is, the woke people don't agree on shit, and they also can't be counted on. Like, guys, you can virtually count on guys to be like, I don't know, pro-action movie or, or pro-sports or at least pro-video games. Woke people, like, if you want to make an action movie, woke people, with the exception of, like, Marvel, don't watch action movies. And what fraction of them, of them do is someone you can't count on. Meanwhile, you can definitely piss on most of the people who very commonly watch action movies because a lot of them, a hell of a lot more of them, are not woke and, in fact, anti-woke then woke and can be counted on to buy a ticket. Same with video games. Believe it or not, a lot of woke people don't play video games at all, let alone reliably favor a genre or a brand of a video game. No, a lot of them just don't fucking play games. Like, period. They watch TV or they read comics or something. Like, 
you keep trying to take a niche thing. Because even though action movies are pretty much mainstream, they're still not reliably mainstream. And then you narrow and narrow and narrow and narrow the amount of people you can reliably count on to watch this product while widening and widening and widening the, the amount of people who will automatically and fundamentally and unequivocally reject your product on the face of it the second they hear about it. So when you're getting your definite no's bigger and your definite yeses smaller, that means you make less money. And this doesn't just go for woke products. This goes for woke politics. The more people who will not accept your transgender bathrooms, your fucking pushing transgender shit on kids, the people who won't accept gay marriage or won't accept um, the, the people who actually are racist or the people who... Uh, um, are definitely not okay with how much you your platform is actively designed to uh, prejudic prejudicially oppress and attack white people specifically and openly. Okay, still about 65% of the country is white. That's and how many of those whites are lacking in any self-interest or self-fucking-respect. You see how you just keep increasing definite no's while shrinking definite yeses to cast out like a, this gray net of, of like this gray net of like, can you count on any of this to work for you? Can you, can you depend on any of this? Is any of this your base? What Democrats are finding out is that their base is the fucking head of a pin. And they're trying to balance a pyramid upside down on top of it, thinking it's not going to tip over. Think it's going to balance on that much space. When you've basically reduced your definite yes to a tiny pinprick and you go from Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton in a slugger you know a, a slobber knocker where where Bernie probably could have won or at least lost closely if if the DNC didn't fuck him in 2016 it, it was neck and neck to Bernie is winning repeatedly in these caucuses by the skin of his teeth in a field of five that's a significant reduction in the popularity of Bernie. And I can't remember any of these Bernie bros from 2016 being, you know who I really fucking want? Joe Biden. I can't remember any human being at all knowing any who the fuck Pete Buttigieg is back then either. I do remember a ton of hype and interest in Elizabeth Warren in 2016. She was the progressive, like, why the fuck isn't she running? I guess she just wants to stay out of Hillary Clinton's way because she's who we want. Her support is shrinking like an ice cube in the fucking desert. The person who progressives probably would have preferred over both Clinton and Bernie in 2016 can't catch a break because she's doing all the shit I just talked about for 18 minutes. So I should cut it off here. We just keep in mind, there is no hope in 2020 for Democrats. And I suspect that not only will they be crushed in the presidential election, they're probably fucked in the Senate. And if they hold on to the House, holy shit, I don't think it'll be by much. I think there's going to be a sweeping horde of people out there to check R down the fucking line. And I'm one of them. Thanks for watching.